All right, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Ryan Helbach. Uh, I'm gonna be talking with you all today about the upcoming Air Force Pitch Day. Uh, we're gonna be taking, taking questions from uh, everybody that's on the line here. And then as well, we'll be posting this video uh, to the uh, Air Force Pitch Day website once we, uh, once we get done here. So first of all, just wanna welcome you all uh, and, and thank you very much for taking the time. Recognize that the, we're kind of the, the tail end of a, a holiday week here. Um, so appreciate you joining in. We are uh, very excited to be putting on the, the, the first uh, Air Force Pitch Day. This is gonna be an awesome opportunity for, for small businesses to get their technologies and their ideas in front of uh, Air Force customers uh, to be able to make pitches uh, and then within that same day of making pitches, uh, be able to get feedback uh, on that pitch. And if they're selected for a potential contract, uh, to be awarded that contract, sign that contract, and uh, to be able to uh, receive the first payment for that contract all in one day. So this is uh, an uh, excellent opportunity uh, for, for small businesses, and it's uh, definitely an exciting time for the, the Air Force. So today, uh, we're gonna be doing what's called an Ask Me Anything uh, session. And the idea of this session is to, to be talking about the overall uh, Air Force pitch day, and then as well, we're gonna talk about some of the, the logistics that go along with that pitch day, specifically, um, We'll be talking about the, the contracting side of uh, the pitch day and what all, uh, what all for you as a small business uh, should be expecting uh, as, as you engage with, with us for this uh, event. So uh, joining me today uh, is uh, uh, myself, um, and then as well, I also have uh, Brittany Butler, who is a contracting officer uh, with the Air Force Research Laboratories, and then as well, uh, Major Chris Jones, uh, who is also uh, uh, part of the contracting uh, team for the Air Force, uh, and they're going to be talking about different aspects of the overall uh, contracting side of things for the, the event itself. Um, <clears throat> so the first thing I want to talk about is uh, for for this actual ask, ask me anything. Um, feel free to uh, use the group chat to ask questions, or as well, uh, you should be able to to raise your hand uh, to. Uh, and, and then I would uh, select you to be unmuted uh, so that you can ask your question as well. Um, so feel free to use those two options uh, as you uh, have your questions. So we're gonna do a little bit of uh, conversation uh, about the event itself and then we'll, we'll take questions and uh, we'll provide answers throughout. So one of the big things, uh, especially for, for companies as, you, as you're asking questions and, and talking today, recognize that uh, you all, uh, this will be recorded and posted. Um, so please don't share uh, what you're planning to propose. Uh, save that for the proposal itself. We're definitely excited to hear about your technologies, uh, but this isn't uh, necessarily the, the right time for that. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we will be doing uh, on Monday, January 7th, at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we'll be doing uh, one last Ask Me Anything session, and that'll be focused primarily on the technical aspects of the Air Force Pitch Day. Um, so that'll be a, an excellent opportunity for you to talk with the actual uh, folks that are, are looking and, and have the technical challenges, um, and, and it'll give you that, that opportunity. So uh, with that, uh, the first thing I uh, wanna talk about is uh, for folks that haven't seen it yet, uh, if you go out and you can do a quick uh, Google search or, or use your search engine, uh, do a search of Air Force Pitch Day. Uh, we now have a, a website up and running for it. Uh, this would be the best place for you to get uh, latest uh, latest information on it and the most up-to-date um, uh, kind of answers to any potential questions. So we'll be posting the videos uh, uh, from our previous Ask Me Anything as well as this current Ask Me Anything and the, the Ask Me Anything on Monday uh, to that website. So definitely check that out. Um, right now, uh, the Air Force Pitch Day uh, is uh, planned for March 6th and 7th, uh, and it'll be occurring in New York City. Uh, we haven't locked down the exact venue uh, for the event, but we should have something within the next week or two. And again, go out to that Air Force Pitch Day uh, website. Uh, that'll be the, the location to, to get more information about that. So a couple uh, pieces of information uh, about kind of the, the timeline for the next two months, if you will. Uh, so we're gonna be going into what we call the solicitation period. Uh, this is between January 7th and February 6th, and that's where we'll be actu actually asking you uh, to put in your proposals uh, to participate in the pitch day. Um, so again, if you go out to that Air Force uh, uh, Pitch Day website, you'll be able to get links to uh, where to propose and, and how to propose. Um, so 
uh, after proposals are submitted, we'll do an initial uh, evaluation screening of uh, companies that are proposed, and we'll, uh, we'll basically do a down selection uh, of about 20, 20 companies or so uh, per specific technology vertical. So we have three technology verticals that we're looking at. We'll do a down selection um, to about 20 companies each, and we'll invite those to uh, those companies to New York City to do their pitch. Um, so a couple things to keep in mind is that in order to receive an award uh, for, for uh, the actual event, you need to be present uh, on March 6th and 7th in New York City and, and be able to give your, your presentation there. Um, so in addition to that, uh, um, We'll also be uh, providing information on that website uh, about some of the uh, things that you need to do when you put in your proposals. Uh, so there's there's a couple things that you need to do, and we're going to talk about it a little more in depth here today uh, for actually making sure that your uh, business is registered with the federal government uh, so that you can receive contracts from the federal government. And we're going to be providing a one-page document up on that website, encourage uh, businesses to go out, review that to make sure that you are registered and that your information is correct. For, uh, for the actual proposal. Um, in a, uh, addition to that, um, we're gonna be uh, including some uh, information uh, about um, some of the challenges that we've seen, and we're gonna talk about that today as well uh, with previous uh, proposals for uh, the unique topics that we've done uh, for, for the uh, Air Force. Um, so with that, uh, I'm actually going to turn it over to uh, Chris Jones and Brittany Butler. We're going to provide a little bit of uh, discussion about what we're expecting for the, the contracting aspects of that March 6th and 7th event, um, and I'll let them take it from here. So over to you, Chris and, and Brittany. All right. Uh, thank you, Ryan. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, my name is uh, Chris Jones, and I am up here at Air Force Headquarters Contracting, and I am helping with the uh, pitch day event. Uh, one of the most unique items that you're going to see out of this and something that's a little different from what we traditionally do is we have developed a one-page contract and there'll be a sample of this posted out uh, on the website uh, that you'll be able to see uh, through the the information that gives you on how to actually apply for the SIBR contract. There'll be a, a sample of this contract out there. Uh, it's a little different than what we traditionally have uh, for a contract. Uh, but the intent here is to simplify it down to the most basic elements uh, that we're looking for in a contract and to help provide an expeditious manner to deliver all of these contracts after successful pitches on the Air Force pitch day. So uh, one of the most unique items on it, uh, if you pull up this contract uh, off of the website, is that all of the contract clauses that we will be adding to this contract are incorporated by reference. What does that mean? It just means that we're not putting all of the text that traditionally goes with a clause uh, into the contract. It's, it's applicable, it's full force, uh, it provides you all of the rights and coverages that the normal clause does. It's just not listed in complete text. And just to give you a perspective on what does that mean, uh, if we were to incorporate all of our clauses by full text, it runs something like 90 pages. So the the way we reduced this down to one page was to, to simply incorporate these clauses by reference. Uh, but we do have a resource and a link on there that will direct you to where you can find the full text clauses. And we will also be providing the full text versions online as well uh, that you can review during the the solicitation and your bid proposal uh, timeframe. And as always, you can always reach out to a contracting officer um, or to the SIBR office, in this case, pre-solicitation, uh, so that you can get a full understanding of what these clauses actually do. We're not trying to hide information. Uh, we're just trying to simplify the form to get it down to a, a one-page effort. So that will be the, the first uh, new thing that you'll see on these, uh, this pitch day initiative. Um, so are there any immediate questions on that? And if not, I'll roll right into uh, the other significant difference, which will be us using a GPC uh, to pay for these actions. Okay, if you have any questions on the one-page contract, just uh, write them down in a group chat and we will address those as they come up. 
uh, and we'll always be available to answer them otherwise. Uh, as far as using a GPC, that's the next big initiative we have on this, and this is to go back to uh, what Ryan was talking about earlier, which is achieving the pay in a day uh, capability. Um, we have done this once on an earlier initiative earlier in the year. Uh, we hit some snags. Uh, we're working out those technical issues right now. Uh, some were government, some were contractor side, uh, but we're hoping to have some uh, lessons learned that we can post as well to show that um, things that we learned through this process, whether it's using a certain service and its caps on how much you can receive on a single transaction or on the government side, uh, just making sure that we have all of the authorizations with the bank so that we can make uh, larger dollar swipes uh, with the credit card. Uh, than we normally make. Uh, but the intent here is to, to simplify the billing process uh, and get uh, our vendors, our new to the government vendors paid rapidly and efficiently. Um, and what you see in terms of time frame, uh, the normal process, which is to submit an invoice online through a electronic based system, uh, that can take as quickly as a month uh, it usually averages four to eight weeks to get paid via that method, uh, as opposed to the GPC method, which is instantaneous. So uh, that is a, a big advantage in terms of getting money now for, for services rendered. And we're really excited about that uh, and, and tying it to this one page contract just to just to stretch the bounds of, of what we traditionally do in, in government contracting. Uh, so both of these initiatives are uh, new and different from what we traditionally see uh, in the Cyber Phase 1 contracts. So um, if you have any questions on that, if you want any additional information, please draft up some questions. I'm seeing a few right now. Um, draft up some questions and we'll get you, uh, get you the answers. So we had one question from David Shaw to everyone. Right. So the, the question from David Shaw was, to be clear, the contracting document falls under the SIBR program, right? Uh, Ryan, correct me if I'm wrong, but yes. These are all SIBR phase one contracts. So the second question, if awarded, do we need to have someone on site who is authorized to commit the company to the contract? In addition to the proposed PI would who would pitch the effort, or can we provide the authorization in advance? Uh, from that perspective, it's whoever can is authorized by the company to enter into contracts. So if that's the same person that's pitching, um, then it can obviously be the same person, but we definitely need someone that speaks on behalf of the company to, to sign that document. Just like it'll be a, a contracting officer with a a warrant who has the authority to commit the government, they will also be the, they'll have that authority, so we'll need the person that has the authority on the company side to do that as well. Sorry, uh, the next question is what does GPC stand for? Uh, in the government, we like to use a lot of acronyms. GPC is Government Purchase Card. Uh, it's our version of a credit card. How many topics or how many companies would be awarded per topic out of 20 companies that present Ryan do you want to handle that one or do you want me to uh, yeah so uh, so we're planning on uh, if, if we have about 20 companies per topic three three topics specifically uh, we could award all the way up to, to all 60 of those um, or we could uh, award a subset of it so we're not uh, we're uh, tying our hands, if, our, if you will, uh, as to the number that we're going to uh, restrict ourselves. But at this point, it could be all the way up to the, the 60 or uh, more than likely to be a subset of that. So there will be some companies that do come out and make their pitch that are not selected. OK. So the next question is, if we are already contracted under an AFWorks phase one, can the pitch day contract be, I think you're meaning be, just be a phase two. Uh, the intent with this pitch day for these 
phase one topics is to award contracts on people that submitted under that phase one. Ryan, I'll let you talk to anything else uh, that you want to expand on outside of that. Uh, but for this phase one, pitch day, pay in a day, uh, with these special topics that are out right now, it will only be those that have responded under that that are invited to present and pitch. Yes, that's correct. So, yeah, so so for this event specifically, we are looking at uh, basically new uh, new proposals, new phase ones. Um, so we're not looking uh, necessarily at past uh, past efforts or past phase twos. Okay, so the next question is, if largest costs are compensation to individuals, can my small business charge the card for the amount that would normally be on an invoice for labor? Um, the intent here with us to to do our payments for the the this contract is that you'll have a contract line item, which will be uh, the initial pitch and, and the data that you provide in that pitch, so your presentation, uh, and then that will be the first payment. So there should be some delineation in your proposal that says, this is my cost for uh, my initial deliverable. It, I don't know if that's clear enough, Ryan. Yeah, so so uh, I guess from a, a small business standpoint, when you put in your proposal, you'll be asked to put in kind of a, a breakdown of your your costs. And so uh, for that first payment uh, that you would receive uh, at the, the actual pitch uh, event, and then as well the the final uh, payment that you would receive for the contract, it'll just be a a breakout of that overall cost. Um, so so at the end of the day, uh, basically we'll we'll let's say. You Put in a proposal for one hundred and fifty-eight thousand uh, dollars. We would basically take that um, and we'll be making an initial payment. That's a, um, a percentage of that, uh, basically that that cost uh, up front on day one, and then we would be paying the remainder of it uh, at the closeout of the contract. So, okay. uh, I, yeah, I can jump in and take the the next question. It says the right. the Yep. The, the Pitch Day website says that Pitch Day is open to all that ideas furthering national security. However, we found that the list of topics uh, for two of the Pitch Days seem to be more specific. Uh, more specific. Sorry, give me one second here. Uh, to to uh, specific areas. So the the uh, challenge here is we're looking for specific uh, verticals. Um, as as we uh, have this pitch day, um, so we do have a, a topic uh, that's being run concurrently with these uh, pitch day events. Uh, that's an open innovation topic. So this is basically a wide open call for ideas, um, and that's definitely a very good avenue as well. Uh, it would be topic number five under uh, the Air Force uh, 191 SBIR program. So I encourage you to check that one out as well uh, for. Uh, for the sexual uh, pitch event, we'll be looking at those uh, three areas of uh, battlefield airmen, uh, digital, and uh, uh, C3 INN, uh, command control, communications, uh, and intelligence, and networking. So those will be the main verticals that we're looking at. Okay. Chris, I'll let you take the next one. There was one actually right before that. It says, if two companies combine on a proposal, and only one is currently in SAM. Would the second just ask as a uh, act as a subcontractor? Uh, in that instance, you know we're going to be talking with wh whoever proposes. So, I guess to say, if you have if this is a joint venture, then uh, and, and you want to be billed as a joint venture, then you probably need to be registered in, or you need to be registered in SAM as a joint venture. Otherwise, it would it would kind of result in a prime sub relationship. Um, but we will primarily be interfacing only with the, really the the face of the company, which would be the one that is the SAM registered. So uh, internally, how you work that uh, I think is is kind of to you. Um, but that would be a, a prime sub relationship if it was just two companies or teaming. Brian, do you got any addition on that? No, that's, that's, yeah, I agree with what you had. Okay. Uh, the next question is, are there limits to funding under GPC? Um, our intent is that uh, all of these phase ones 
should be able to be paid with the or will be able to be paid with the GPC. So uh, generally, our limits on the on the government purchase card derive from it being uh, under the simplified acquisition threshold. So uh, that's just government speak for yes. The, there there are limits, uh, but these phase ones don't exceed that limit. Hopefully that's clear. And then uh, the next question is, are cyber topics open um, to explore options for innovation solutions that may fall outside of the Air Force's current field of uh, focus and topics? So in essence, the, the unknown unknowns, if you will. Um, so with these three topics, uh, if it's something that, that kind of falls within that area, so a good example of that is the, the, uh, uh, on the, the battlefield airmen side. So, so how can we help optimize uh, individuals when they're out in the, the field? Uh, so we have a couple specific things that we're looking for uh, with, with that uh, vertical, um, but definitely we're open to other ideas as long as it's within that vertical. I did mention that we also have that open innovation topic that is that very broad of provide us some some unknown unknowns that, that we may not have a, a call out specifically for. Um, so again, encourage you to look at that. <clears throat> okay, so the next question is, uh, if our technology is not related to the three technical areas, is it worth making a proposal? Um, so when we, we do the evaluation, and really this gets to uh, how do we do the evaluations and what are we looking for? So when we do the evaluations uh, for that initial down select to the invitees to come out to the March 6th and 7th event, um, we're looking at, at three primary areas. Uh, we're looking at how well does it relate to the, the technical area that we were uh, asking for, so those three, those three verticals. Um, what's the, the team composition? Uh, do they have the, the technical uh, acumen as well as uh, uh, the, the potential ability to uh, quote unquote commercialize that technology or get that technology uh, into the hands of our, our warfighters. And then uh, the last point uh, around commercialization, uh, does the company have the ability um, to, to basically scale from an idea to a prototype to an actual uh, implementable uh, solution for for uh, potential end users? So when we do our evaluations, that we're, that's what we're looking for. Um, so, you know, to the question of, all right, if I'm putting something that's totally out in left field, that's not even related to the three verticals that we're looking for here, um, then I, I wouldn't recommend for this. Uh, I will, would point you to that open innovation topic. All right, so the next question is, are you looking for technologies that help the Air Force improve supply chain management for pitch day? Um, so uh, as I mentioned before, uh, that uh, supply chain is not uh, necessarily one of the, the verticals. Um, I, I would encourage you to read uh, the actual descriptions of what we're looking for uh, with those three verticals, and that can be found on that Air Force pitch day website. Um, and that would give you a better, uh, better idea. Uh, next question is, is topic 005 not part of the pitch day uh, event then? Uh, so for the actual uh, event where folks will be pitching in person and uh, getting feedback and, and contracts all on the same day, that, that open innovation uh, topic 005 is not uh, part of the pitch day. We will be doing a number of things uh, that align between that topic and the pitch day, um, but it won't be in quite the same format. Uh, the next question is, each of the pitches for the government in New York in March uh, will be a private session between contractor and government, uh, correct? So uh, the question was, uh, when you make your pitch uh, to, to the government, that will be uh, will, what we call source selection. Uh, so then uh, what that means to you all is that, uh, in essence, it will just be uh, government individuals and uh, your, your team uh, from this, your small business. Um, so for the March 6th event, uh, where we'll be hearing all the, the pitches and making those awards and initial payments, that is correct. It'll just be the government and individual contractors uh, hearing those pitches. On March 7th, we'll actually be opening it up to a, a much wider audience and we'll allow folks to, to, to give a uh, presentation to Air Force leadership, uh, industry, and as well, a local uh, investment community. And so this would be an opportunity for the folks that have come out uh, to do that, that pitch, um, to, to actually get up in front of a, a much larger audience and be able to catch, connect and present their idea to that much larger audience. <clears throat> 
All right, the next question is, is it advisable to submit two proposals? Uh, one, one is a prime and one is a sub. So my big recommendation on proposals is it does take a little bit of time to put in a proposal. Um, and you do have a relatively short window uh, between January 8th and February 6th when you can actually submit proposals. Um, so I really encourage you, if you're gonna put in, put in effort, put in a solid effort uh, to get a, a good proposal in, uh, rather than trying to do a, a shotgun approach and, and put in, let's say, 10, 10 different proposals. Um, you are able to do that, but I will, will tell you that uh, in the past, uh, companies that have done that, it's pretty clear that they have put in, put in a uh, marginal effort on all 10 versus just one solid good one. Um, so you are welcome to do put in one as a prime and one as a subcontractor, um, but definitely recommend that you think that through as you do it. <clears throat> All right, so the next question, uh, are you interested in technologies to reduce time and cost for annual financial audits now required? Um, so uh, again, I encourage you to go out to the Air Force Pitch Day website, look at the technology verticals that we have. Uh, I will tell you that we, we don't have that as one of the areas for these Pitch Day topics. Um, I encourage you to look at the other potential Air Force and DOD SBIRs. Uh, there may be something that aligns there with you, for you. All right, Chris, I'll let you take the next one uh, about right. the 150 game limit. Oh, oh, where is that one at? I was reading the is normally expected to be paid via GPC as the upfront amount. Sorry, I lost track on it. So, sorry, the next question I had was from a company perspective, are specific bank accounts needed to receive GPC payments? Um, what we did with the the test run we did a few months ago is there there needs to be some sort of service uh generally speaking that will take a credit card on on your company behalf i i would assume not knowing the and assumptions are sometimes hazardous but i would assume that on the back end of that that needs to link to some sort of banking account uh or or the service just just captures the transaction for you so um, but there will need to be a method uh, that the company provides for us to actually execute that that GPC payment. So uh, I guess to answer that question in a roundabout way is in order to receive a GPC payment, you need to have uh, an ability to receive credit card payments. Um, as far as whether it links to a bank account or a specific bank account, uh, we're not going to mandate that. but the service or activity that you use to receive that GPC payment may. And I guess, Chris, would you mind uh, talking about what some of the other companies have used uh, in the past as potential services? Again, not endorsing anything from a right. government perspective, but just what we've seen. Um, I, I think the, the one of the big ones we've seen are services like the, the Square. Uh, and I think you see that pretty much at think of what you would see at uh, like a food truck operation um, where they have a, a square that you can swipe or something at a, a trade show where you can swipe it at the counter. Square is a, a popular one. There are some transaction limitations uh, that exist with that method. Uh, we are going to try to uh, mitigate some of those uh, issues and whether that means we have to do multiple swipes and we get that pre-approved by the bank uh, so that we can exceed the, the transaction limit that Square sets up, uh, then we're gonna try to do that. Um, I'm most familiar with Square. I'm not really all that familiar with the other ones, um, but I do know that there are several out there uh, that are available. Um, I, do, I do know uh, there was a couple companies that also used uh, QuickBook uh, to receive okay. the, the payment as well. Um, and so, the, again, that's another potential service that you could use. I uh, encourage you, uh, you all as small businesses to go out and, and look at uh, potential ways um, and, and the benefits and, and uh, disadvantages to using the different services. Okay. Uh, so the next question was, does the phase one 150K limit apply here and what percentage is normally expected to be paid via GPC as the upfront amount. Um, I think this kind of goes back to uh, a question we had that was similar earlier. Um, our up, 
we won't be doing an upfront payment. Um, we're going to be paying for the pitch. Uh, so if you are a successful selectee of the of the one page contract, your first payment is going to be um, the first contract line item um, on that contract. And that's what we will pay with that initial contract swipe. And then the next uh, con or the next action with the purchase card will be upon uh, delivery of your, your final product uh, at the end of contract performance. All right, uh, so the next question is, is there an advantage for veteran-owned business or 8A companies? Um, so this is a, a fair and open competition. Uh, when we uh, evaluate the proposals and, and look uh, at the um, proposals, we're looking at it again from that technical team and uh, commercialization perspective. We do track metrics uh, with respect to veteran-owned uh, small, uh, small businesses as well as 8A businesses, um, and we definitely encourage you to apply, um, but there's not necessarily uh, an advantage or not an advantage. All right, the next question is, uh, can a company submit with the same PI on more than one uh, Air Force pitch day topic? Um, so yes, uh, more than more than able to do that, uh, but but we definitely recognize uh, as the Air Force as we look at proposals, um, you, you'll be asked to put in uh, kind of what percentage of their time uh, is going to be committed to the the projects, um, and I've seen uh, all the way from from folks that are putting in uh, quote unquote two percent uh, time or something like that. And so so as we look at that, you know that definitely factors into the team perspective. So just be cognizant um, that that we as we do our evaluations, we are looking at that team perspective. So the next question was, who on the government side will be receiving the pitches, title, and organization? Um, suffice it to say that the, those receiving the pitches are going to be people that are technically invested in it. So uh, if the topic applies to their, uh, if they're a warfighter that applies to that topic, then they're going to have, I think our intent is to have senior leaders, like a senior engineer or senior program manager there uh, to receive it. To receive those pitches, someone who can verify on behalf of the program or the topic that this is uh, something we want to invest in. Correct, Ryan? Yes, that's correct. So, and, and as well, um, we'll we'll be talking more uh, on Monday at the Ask Me Anything on Monday, uh, and we'll have the specific organizations that are uh, sponsoring these topics uh, talking on Monday as well. Um, so before we, we go uh, kind of further with, with uh, more questions here, I do want to take a moment and uh, as well provide some time for Brittany Butler uh, to talk a little bit um, about um, some of the aspects that she's seen uh, as a contracting officer working with, with companies as they sold, uh, pro put in proposals and, and get on contract uh, for these types of, of efforts. So Brittany, uh, if you don't mind uh, providing a little bit of um, uh, background on yourself and then as well talking about some of the things that you've seen uh, from past proposals. Okay, um, my name is Brittany Butler. I'm a contracting officer here at Kirtland Air Force Base. I'm actually the Cibber PCO for all the Cibbers that come through our office here. Um, so for phase ones, uh, they're a lot simpler than the phase twos. However, uh, a lot of upfront work is um, required. So the biggest thing, um, I was trying to answer the question earlier, but my uh, mic wouldn't unmute. For the SAM, um, if you are gonna be a subcontractor, we do have to check subcontractors on any Cyber phase ones that do come in. So my recommendation is to be registered in SAM, even if you are going to be a uh, a sub on any. Uh, we check the prime and subs. And then, so the biggest thing there is the SAM. Um, I'm not sure if everybody's familiar with it, but it's a website where you have to register your company in order to get any kind of award um, with a government. So the biggest, um, the time there is what takes a while. So my suggestion is if you do plan to submit a proposal that you go ahead and register your company right away. Uh, that way, when we receive the proposals, the first thing we do is check to see if you're registered. And um, if that delays it, it could um, defer you from getting an award. Uh, the second thing is we also check a website, and it's called 
it's a DLA Defense Logistics Agency Deployment Certification Program. And we um, ask that companies be registered in the, JP, uh, the JCP because it allows the, com the government to give you information. The Civil Phase Ones, um, we don't necessarily give you information. Um, I know it's a feasibility study. However, if you do get a Phase Two, this process takes about six weeks and you have to do it through mail. So my recommendation is while you're in there registering for SAM, that you go in and register in the JPC because I know the cage codes um, for SAM and JCP, for some reason the company or the, the websites, I don't know if they talk to each other or how it works on that end, but I do know that people have issues when they're not registered in one or the other. So um, I know that Ryan's putting out information. I can go ahead and send him this. Um, it's a DD form 2345 for the JCP that you'd have to fill out. So we can go ahead and put that information on the website as well, if that would be helpful. Yeah, that'll be that'll be perfect, Brittany, and we'll make sure we get it up there for everyone to see. Okay, and then um, the topics also what I uh, would suggest looking at is a lot of them are restricted and don't allow foreign nationals um, to be allowed to do the efforts. So before you propose or propose any foreign nationals, I highly recommend that you look to see if that's allowed because that's going to stop you. Um, and a foreign national is anybody that's not a U.S. citizen or doesn't have a green card. Green card holders are okay, and that's not going to stop you from getting an award. And so, let's see, I'm trying to look. Uh, the other thing is data assertions. Um, on this one, and correct me if I'm wrong, Ryan, I don't believe data assertions are going to make a big difference on the phase ones, but if you are going to assert data, that may hold up the process. Um, the phase twos, I know that's definitely a negotiation topic. Yeah, so, so uh, what we've done in previously for uh, efforts where we've basically done this very rapid evaluation and very rapid awards, uh, we have not uh, accepted data assertions for the phase ones, largely because it is a feasibility study. Um, we're really looking to, to you all to do that, uh, what we call customer discovery of basically validating that your solution does does fit and does solve uh, problems across the, the Air Force. Um, and so uh, for the phase ones, we don't, do not accept, uh, we'll, we'll not be accepting that data uh, assertions, uh, but we will be considering it for the, the phase twos when you actually get into that prototyping phase. Um, that, that's the, the larger dollar amounts and longer time frames. <clears throat> Okay, and then um, one of the other things that I, um, it shouldn't be an issue, but when you are registered in SAM, I, you need to make sure that you're registered as small business and that your number of affiliates, if you have any affiliations, does not exceed uh, 500. Um, it shouldn't be an issue, but sometimes it is, so I just want to throw that out there in case anybody has that concern. Um, another thing is when it says, is your firm more than 50% owned um, by multiple business concerns or uh, capital and companies, hedge funds, that's going to be an issue. You have to be owned by, or you have to be a small business. If you're owned by anything other than small business, uh, you're not going to qualify. And, and so what that means is basically that you need to be uh, at least uh, 50, 50 percent or 51 percent owned. 50 percent. Uh, yeah, 50 percent. Um, so a, a, if you're a company that has uh, more than 50% VC ownership in your company, you would not be able to, to be awarded a contract. Um, one other thing I will point out that we've seen in the past is uh, as you register within that SAMS uh, website, make sure that you register to receive contracts. Uh, these will be contracts uh, versus uh, what uh, traditionally we've seen is some companies get registered to receive grants, and, and in that case, uh, we're not able to make the award uh, very quickly uh, because uh, we can only do contracts with uh, what we're doing here. Okay, um, I saw a question, but for some reason about teaming with the 500, more than 500, um, it went lower, so I can't really see the question. Did you see that one, Ryan, about the question uh, about teaming with a company that more than 500 uh, yeah, employees? Yeah, can, uh, can we, uh, here's the, the question. Can we uh, team with a large company with more than 500 employees 
and performs about 5% of the work share. So that would be considered as a subcontractor, I'm assuming, and yes, the subcontractors can be large businesses. Yes, that's correct, yep. Okay, uh, and then Brittany, maybe um, uh, you can answer this question as well. Subcontractors, do they need to be registered in SAMS uh, with a cage cone and DUNS number? Uh, can you answer that question as well? Yes, they do. All right. Um, All right, uh, I'm just gonna go back through and we're gonna catch up on some of the questions here. Give us one second. Okay. Okay, uh, so the question here is, uh, what if your top, or proposal applies to two topics? Can uh, Will we get a chance to pitch for both topic uh, panels. So what we're going to likely do um, in that case is uh, definitely encourage you uh, if you think that that your, uh, your solution or solutions uh, fit into either uh, either topics, encourage you to apply for both of those. We'll actually do uh, as we do our selection. We'll kind of uh, compare and we'll probably just we'll invite uh, invite you to uh, present for just one of those uh, topics. <clears throat> All right. All right, so the next question is, uh, please comment on uh, this topic is specifically aimed at later stage development rather than early stage basic science and research. Does uh, later stage mean applied research and does it mean a product at later stages? So uh, again, we are uh, looking to move very rapidly. So the, the phase one is gonna be five months versus a traditional about nine months for, for phase ones. And then as well, the phase twos, we're looking at a shorter time frame of about uh, just over a year versus uh, just over two years for a traditional SBIR. And so uh, that's why when we say we're looking for later stage technologies, we're looking for things that are uh, uh, further further developed technology uh, timeline. Um, so the, we don't necessarily want you to put in your proposals to do research projects. Uh, we are looking for that kind of applied and advanced uh, 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 research and technology. All right. All right, can you, uh, next question is, can you discuss the nature of the pre-proposal? When is it due versus the actual proposal? Um, so you will be putting in your, your primary proposal, which will be a five page uh, technical, uh, uh, technical uh, paper, plus a 15 page slide deck uh, between January 8th and February 6th. Uh, that's when we'll actually uh, be receiving your formalized proposal. Uh, for the actual pitch day itself uh, on March 6th and 7th, we're actually going to be using a much shorter format. Um, so we're going to have companies, companies will have about five minutes to, to, to pitch, plus about five minutes for Q&A, and then we'll provide about five minutes of, of feedback. So it's a very rapid uh, presentation for those actual days. Um, so what I would recommend to, to companies uh, as you put in your application and put in your proposal um, is to put in that five-page white paper and the 15-page slide deck, and then be ready if you're selected to, to have a subset of slides uh, from that 15 page slide deck that you would actually present uh, the day of. And so obviously this presents a challenge for, for you all. You need to be very concise and to the point, uh, especially within that, that pitch deck of what it is you're doing, uh, what's the problem you're solving, what's the advantage you're bringing, uh, who do you believe your, your customers are, um, and why, you know, at the end of the day, why should the Air Force, why should the uh, DOD be uh, interested in, in your potential solution? Um, so definitely uh, encourage you to, to do that. But the actual proposals, everything we'll receive will be between uh, January 8th and February 6th. <clears throat> When, when can we access the proposal instructions for, uh, for the uh, pitch day uh, white paper proposals? Uh, so you can actually go out, uh, if you do a, a Google search on uh, DOD SBIR, uh, there is um, a, a number of instructions. Uh, there's instructions from the DOD, uh, there is instructions from the Air Force that has further details uh, in addition to what you see within the uh, the topics that are, are posted on the Air Force Pitch Day website. So very much encourage you to go out, read those instructions, uh, provides quite a bit of detail as to what we're looking for in uh, in that technical proposal, uh, both the, the five-page paper and the 15-page slide deck. Uh, Chris, I'll let you take the next one. Uh, will the bank fees for the uh, government purchase card be a uh, uh, 
charitable expense. Um, I, think, or, I think they mean chargeable, like allowable. Yeah. Yep. yep. Right. So, uh, so will the bank fees on the on the government purchase card payment be a chargeable expense? I think what we're looking for is your proposal should include the the I think it's a three percent fee. Is that correct, Ryan? I don't think we're breaking a, a specific clan out for yeah. for the uh, for actual the fee. fee for that. Yeah. So so uh, traditionally SBIRs uh, have a uh, for for the Air Force have an upper limit of 150k. Uh, so we recognize the fact that that companies would likely have a uh, have a bank fee that would go along with using that government purchase card. We we felt from a cash flow perspective for small businesses that we'd rather try and get cash into your hands uh, quicker, and so that's why we bumped it up to that 158k uh, for the upper limit for proposals for this topic. Right, and, and again, just to reiterate, the the speed of a GPC transaction uh, vice the traditional submit an invoice in the in the electronic wide area workflows system is weeks versus minutes. Um, so there's a there's a tremendous change in this, and and we understand the fee component of it, but uh, the the rapidness of of us paying with a GPC should be a, a, a big advantage to especially to small businesses. So the the next question was how much time will be allocated for a pitch? Will we get a chance for a demo or just presenting slides? Is the pitch expected to be very technical or business focused? Uh, so I think uh, Ryan hit at it a, a minute ago. Um, the time is a five minute pitch uh, with a five minute Q&A potential. And then what was the other five? And then five minutes uh, of feedback. Feedback, yep. Um, as far as the content of the presentation, Ryan, uh, I'll give that back over to you. Yeah. So, so again, uh, we're going to be looking, uh, I mean, five minutes is a very quick time. Um, so we're really looking at what is the, the technical area? Why do you have an advantage? I.e. what is the team or your, you know, the, the company's past experience? Um, and, and then as well, from a commercialization perspective, do you have a plan of actually getting this into the hands of a warfighter? We don't want to just do necessarily just science projects here. At the end of the day, we are trying to get technologies in the hands of our users. Um, and so, um, so, you know, very quick, you'll, you'll have to be very concise, but uh, again, we'll be evaluating with respect to that, that uh, technical team and commercialization. Um, and you can see more, uh, there's more information about uh, what exactly is called out with those specific things at the DOD uh, SBIR website um, and within the instructions for the, the Air Force. So, so Ryan, I did have a question uh, from someone about it, it was it was sent directly to me, but uh, asking about uh, in order to to get around that 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 service charge that banks charge for using it or that the credit card charges for using it, um, is there a way to do a direct deposit? Uh, we don't have that capability. That is generally what's done through the wider workflow system uh, via. Uh, online submission, acceptance, and then going through the defense accounting system to pay. Um, so that's the traditional approach that basically goes straight into your account after after it goes through the the entire four to eight week process of, of getting approved and then paid out of uh, the defense accounting system. Uh, so the GPC is our method for this um, for this activity in particular so um, just go in with with that understanding that our method right now is is to pay this via GPC for the the rapid approach and and you know one of the reasons that we're doing that is as we we'd heard from small businesses in the past that sometimes it takes up to, to two months uh, or more between them putting their invoice in and actually receiving payment and we recognize the challenges that uh, small businesses and startups have uh, with cash flow and so that's why we went to this uh, this GPC we want to be able to you know give you feedback on what you're doing we want to be able to get you on contract and actually get some some cash in in, in your pockets um, very very quickly and so so we recognize uh, those concerns and so that's what we're trying to do here <clears throat> Okay, so the next question we have, uh, can you comment on payment? Does the company wait until the end of phase one 
to get the rest of the payment or will there be progressive payments? Uh, right now we have, uh, I believe this is broken out, initial payment, which is post your initial pitch and is paid at the, uh, at the date, at the, at the time that we sign uh, the one page contract. And then your next payment is upon that final delivery of the, of the end product. And I don't think that y'all are altering that from a in, from the cyber office perspective, correct? That is, yeah, that is correct. So there will be just two 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 payments. Um, that first payment is basically a four year pitch uh, on the actual pitch day, and then the, the last payment uh, will will again be a fifteen page slide deck, basically capturing what all you did during that fifteen month or I'm sorry, with within that five month uh, feasibility study, and then where you're actually looking at going with the, the technology uh, as far as prototyping. All right, uh, so uh, um, my coworker here, uh, Lieutenant Jack Monroe, uh, he's posting up uh, right now into the chat window uh, for the Air Force uh, Pitch Day <clears throat> website, and then as well the, the DOD um, uh, website, which includes the, the further more in-depth instructions uh, that encourage, I, I encourage companies to go out and look at as you're putting together your proposals. Chris, I'll let you. I'll let you uh, take the next ones um, as we could. Okay, you had one on. Are you able to answer a question regarding the AFWorks for Topic Five? Have we kind of already covered that one? Uh, no. Uh, if, if you don't mind asking, uh, it, basically, can you put into both both topics? Is that what the question was? No. Uh, I'll, I'll just read the question. So, are you able to answer a question regarding to AFWorks for Topic Five? Uh, for AFWorks, do we have to already have an Air Force customer predetermined or committed prior to submitting? I think that goes back to your point of if you're addressing these open topics, uh, you don't have to have a predetermined customer, correct? Uh, so within within uh, really both uh, the the open uh, topic 005 as well as the pitch day. Um, you can still put in without having a defined specific customer. We really encourage you to, to have done some due diligence, um, potentially identify that, but that is part of what that feasibility study is, is that customer discovery and, and validating and, and making sure that you kind of right. know who within our ecosystem uh, would be kind of that end user and as well would help you get to that, that final product. Right. Okay, so the next question is, what are the acceptance criteria for receiving the final payment? That will be a submission of your final deliverable, which will be contract line item two, which is that final report, and then uh, confirmation from the program office that that that, that is received. Yep, correct. And then final final payment will be authorized after that. Okay, the next question is: Please clarify: Are we submitting the first prepayment as a large amount line item to cover the cost with a final? with a final reporting payment, or is it something else? And how is the second payment processed since it's not in person? Uh, so just to, just to clarify, it's, it's not a prepayment for the, for the first payment. That is us paying for your successful pitch and then us entering into that agreement, not paying for the pitch. We're entering into an agreement to, to get, uh, your topic further explored and that first payment is for the the pitch the slide deck um, so that that will be the first payment and, and your cost should be according according to that um, if, if, if it's all front-end loaded with all of your cost onto that then uh, I don't think that's going to meet the intent of, of what the cyber office is looking for correct Ryan yeah correct uh, and, and that that's part of your proposal as well when it comes in is is uh, kind of your cost uh, definition. So the next part of that question, so the second payment process since it's not in person, um, I believe we're just doing that over the phone between the card holder and uh, the vendor, correct? I think that's how we're doing them right now. Sorry, you gotta you gotta ask that question again. Sorry about that. So the this the the last part of that question is how is the second payment process since it's not in person, uh, and that's just uh, over the phone. 
Yeah, so, so over the phone, um, and that's what we've done with the other ones. Uh, so uh, with our, our last kind of test, test case uh, with the government purchase uh, credit card, uh, all of the folks were remotely located that we made the payments to. Right. All right. And I think uh, Brittany addressed the subcontractors need to be registered in SAM mm -hmm. uh, with the cage code. Yes. Um, Next question is, can we submit to both pitch day and topic five? Uh, yes, definitely you can do that. Uh, do recognize that um, you cannot be contracted to the government for inherently the, the same thing under these SBIRs. Um, so if you do receive a contract, um, so in essence, if you put a proposal, the exact same proposal uh, in to the pitch day topics as well as to topic five or really any other SBIR topic, uh, recognize that you cannot receive a contract for inherently the, the, the same work. Um, so, again, I strongly recommend that as you put proposals in, uh, put in strong proposals that do match that specific topic area rather than trying to shotgun it out to, to as many different sites. All right. Uh, so the next next question that I see is a, kind of a technical related one. We have a patented commercial uh, SAS or SAAS uh, that solves your uh, your problems. Do you want to hear from us? Um, definitely encourage you again. Uh, look at uh, the, the topics. Uh, look at the verticals that we're we're calling for. Uh, if you think it's a fit, then please put in your proposal. Uh, I can't can't tell you yes or no uh, for for every single company, every single technology. So, um, will you post the recording, please? Uh, many people could not join because of the hundred uh, connection limit. Uh, yes, uh, definitely, definitely recognize that we we saw that we got to 100 right at the start. Um, so we'll be uh, we've been recording all of this, and we will be posting it to to the website. All right. Yeah, we, we're very sorry about the the 100 person limit. Um, the, uh, the, again, we're we're trying to address ways to to allow more folks in, um, and so we recognize that this is a, a challenge, and we'll we'll try and address that um, uh, again in the future. <clears throat> All right, so the, the very last, uh, couple last questions here, uh, and Chris, I think you already kind of hit on this. So the, the five months of work aren't paid until the, the very end. Again, uh, for, for these contracts, they're, they're what we call uh, purchase orders. So we're paying for specific deliverables. Uh, so we'll be paying uh, on the, the first day for your deliverable of your pitch. Uh, we'll be paying at the, on the last day for the deliverable of your final, uh, final report, final presentation. Uh, next question is, is it, uh, is contract available as, as STTR. Uh, so there's two types of uh, basically programs that are run. Um, uh, one is uh, small business innovation research and uh, the other is uh, STTR, which is uh, aimed at uh, universities. Um, so this is primarily, this is only as an SBIR. We are working to set up uh, some of the open innovation topics uh, similar to what we do with SBIRs for STTR, uh, but that will not be in, in this cycle or related to the Air Force pitch day. All right, uh, the next is a, a comment uh, about payments. Uh, again, the way we've uh, structured the payments, uh, we, we feel like is uh, a good way to get uh, companies an initial uh, initial payment, and then we'll make uh, the, the final payment uh, with the final deliverable. Uh, will you host a separate call to discuss technical areas uh, behind the topics? Uh, yes, we will. Uh, it'll be on uh, Monday, January 7th, so this coming Monday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, again, it'll be at this uh, Zoom location. Um, and so definitely uh, encourage you to check that out. Um, and, and again, recognize that there will be that 100 person limit. Um, so uh, we'll, we'll work on the, the government side to see if we can get a, a solution to that. Um, and uh, hopefully we'll get, be able to get more folks in here. All right, uh, next question, and then we'll, we'll start to wrap things up. <clears throat> All right, so the next question is, uh, if the pitch does not result in a contract, will there still be a payment for the pitch itself? <coughs> uh, so there will not be a payment for the pitch itself uh, if you're not selected for that contract. Uh, we recognize that companies will basically be paying uh, to, to fly themselves out to New York and, and stay in New York City to make those pitches. Uh, so we're going to be setting up a number of resources and um, opportunities for, for companies to engage and network uh, even if they don't receive that, that contract. Um, so we do recognize that, yes, you will be uh, spending some money to get out there, 
Uh, and if you don't receive that contract, um, we, we are looking to provide you a couple other opportunities uh, and point you to other uh, potential avenues um, as kind of a, uh, a secondary. Uh. All right. All right. All right. So uh, with that, I think that's answered most of the questions here. Um, let's see. We are not a university, and we have an STTR project. That should be an. Okay. Uh, so I think that's answered most of the questions uh, that that have arisen here with regard to the, the pitch day. Um, so uh, with that, uh, I guess I'll, I'll turn it over to to Brittany. I don't know if you have any uh, closing comments, and then we'll we'll turn it over to Chris as well. Um, so one of the things I was thinking about um, as we were discussing, I know it gives instructions on the CIBR website. So for your cost proposal, uh, some of the stuff we saw last time, um, I'm not sure if they got different directions, but when you do your cost proposal, make sure that you do break everything out instead of just putting a one lump sum of like 50K or 150K, um, because that's also gonna hold up the process. If we have to go back for it to uh, clarify anything, um, it's gonna take a lot longer and it's probably not gonna result in a quick award. Um, other than that, um, oh, and then one other thing was, if you do um, propose a subcontractor, just know that two thirds of the work has to be done by the prime. So uh, if the sub is doing more than one third, then um, that's, it's basically not allowed. Um, other than that, um, I think I covered everything for, um, getting a quick award pretty much. I don't think there's anything else that's gonna stall us. All right, uh, and then Chris, uh, any other comments on your end? Uh, no, not really, uh, only to say that uh, I think we're all super excited about this. Um, it's, it's a chance to do something completely, well, I don't wanna say completely different, totally the same, but completely different way. Um, so we're really trying to, to get access to, to our, our most innovative and forward-looking firms out there uh, by doing something that the Department of Defense has never done before. So I hope everyone out there is excited about it. I know we in the Air Force are, are really excited about it as well. Um, and this is a learning process, process for us all. So if you see something that we could do better, please let us know. Um, we want to be responsive to our firms uh, that are working with us, and we want to we want to do things that create a a great place to work uh, for our small businesses and our innovative firms out there. So uh, let us know what we're doing well. Let us know areas where we can improve, and and as we move through this process, uh, we're going to try to make innovation our standard operating procedure, and, and get. Uh, the competitive advantage back to the U.S. in, in all ways, shapes, and forms. So, thank you. So, so with that, I don't think I could have said it any better, uh, Chris. I, I can't agree more. Uh, so, we're very excited to see, see your all proposals. Uh, really encourage you to to put in. Uh, definitely sorry about the some of the technical issues that we had here today. Uh, again, you know, part of this is uh, we are we are definitely trying new things and we're we're pushing the envelope of what we can do. So, uh, again. Uh, really look forward to your proposals, and we're excited to see you uh, on March 6th and 7th in New York City. Uh, so thank you very much. Uh, look forward to hearing from you. And then, uh, again, remember, we have our Ask Me Anything on Monday. So thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you all.